I've dragged Luke out for a, a quick day session on the Horton Complex. We're into October now. It's a really murky, misty day. And today's going to be bubbler fishing. It's that time of year where the fish are, are out in the deeps and they're bubbling away. There's not much to be found in the edges at the moment. We've had a good walk around as usual. Got your step count up again. Um, and we've ended up on the cray pool. Now I have fished the cray pool for the cameras before. I mean, Luke was here, when was it? March or April? April, yeah. And I actually managed three bites for the camera. But we have got a bit of unfinished business, haven't we? Because I lost a good fish. So I'm going to give it an hour or two here. Um, the boat pool looks like a good bet as well. Kingsmead's looking dead. Horton's looking a bit stitched. Got till, what, about five o'clock it starts to get dark. So yeah, there's a good chance maybe a nick and a bite on a day session at the moment, particularly with the weather as it is. So let's go do it. So it was about 45 minutes ago we were here and they're still fizzing, so that's good. Keeping the bait in the spoon minimal. I'm gonna fish PVA bag and a very small handful of pellet. These fish at the moment, they're so zoned into the naturals, they seem to be almost avoiding too much bait. If it's too blatant, they're not interested. back in one of my favourite haunts. It didn't happen around there, the bubbling fizzled out, if you'll pardon the pun. Um, I've been looking over here, looking across the lake. You know, this is always a good area during the daytime. When the fish have finished feeding, they pop up and go and sit under the snag. So, worth sticking a rod out there. I know we've uh, been here and done it before, haven't we, Luke? But it's one of those days where you want those spots where you, you know you've got a chance of getting a bite. You know, there's not a lot else going. There's not a lot else going on elsewhere, so it's worth a roll of the dice. What I am conscious of is the time. I know I'm stood here waffling to you, but it is one o'clock. We've only got about four hours of usable daylight left. I reckon we can fit a couple of swims into that, can't we? Yeah, we'll give it a go. Give it an hour under the tree. feet are itching like crazy. The old banker spot hasn't uh, proved to be productive today. There's, there's nothing under here, no liners, no sign of fish and in fact the whole lake seems dead. The bubbling stopped soon after we got into the swim. You know they carried on. I don't think I spooked them actually um, dropping the rigs but yeah they're, uh, they're proving to be really tricky to catch on the soft stuff at the moment. Anyway, um, got what two or three hours left. Definitely time for a bite if we can find them. So, time to get on my toes again. Maybe Kingsmead, quick look off the bridge. I know I'm sort of going over old ground, but these are, these are like solid spots to get a bite on a hard day. You know, that's where you find the fish sometimes tucked up in them quiet corners. So, I'm gonna go and have a quick look, and then maybe back to the boat pool for the last hour or so. And if it's uh, to be a blank, so be it. You can't win them all. Um, when the lake's pretty dead and there's not a lot else happening, what can you do? You know, you, you can only do your best. You can only try and find them and try and make a chance. A lot of my chances come right at the death though, so I'm not giving up yet. Still got a couple of hours. See how we go. Back on the boat pool again, back setting up the pole again. Uh, there's a few fizzing out here, aren't there? Uh, one just showed as well as we walked past, so yeah, it's as good a bet as any for the last couple of hours. 
some good bubblers going on out there. And I might have thought they were bream, but we definitely saw a carp show where they're fizzing. So let's get the rods out. Well, it's been a while since the last vlog. In fact, um, well, a couple of months since I last met you, Luke, isn't it? Um, yeah, it's been a hectic couple of months, as always. Been away filming. Um, kind of missed out the autumn period a little bit. And now we're in December. The fishing's really sort of, should we say, shut down. I know it's pretty slow everywhere at the moment. Um, my sort of autumn ended up pretty well. I uh, bagged a really nice one from Horton Church on what was a, a quick overnight. I hate to call it a quick overnight, but yeah, it was uh, 12 hours fishing, arrived late, um, packed up at lunchtime. So yeah, that was a, a really cool one to end the season with. It's been quite a good year for big ones this year. So yeah, what else has been going on? Well, at this time of year, we always start to think about the stock that we've got growing on at Horton and these are fish that have been gathered as eggs or as um, fry from the various lakes on the complex and uh, Vince brings them on in the ponds on site. Um, this is really cool, every year really look forward to this because there's nothing better than selecting and stocking fish that are grown on site and spawned from the existing stock you know so I haven't got any new fish coming in now, everything sort of kept on site. First of all, we moved a few fish around, like the slightly smaller ones, the two-year-olds were graded and um, the best ones were selected to get Vince's special treatment in the pond. Uh, the existing fish in the pond were thinned out and all the better ones were stocked into the church lake. Um, these were four and five-year-olds and they were up to 18 pounds, which was a pretty good weight. You know, Vince did really well this year. Um, the average weight was sort of between 13 and 15 pounds which is the sort of weight that you'd get from a commercial fish farmer. So the fact that we can grow them on site from existing stock and stock them at those weights, you know, I think that's a really good achievement. We've also got some fish coming through from this year's spawning. There's about 500 of those in total and they'll be graded out after the winter and probably the best 200 will be kept to grow on site. So this is a time of year where my own fishing really starts to diversify a little bit. I still fish for carp and I'll still do nights at Horton. I'll do a night or two a week, you know, overnighters. Um, as you saw at the very start of the season, pretty much fishing the same way, but not camped on the bank for days on end. But my fishing would also sort of broaden out a little bit and I encompass other disciplines and other species. So today I'm sat in a park near my house where a beautiful stretch of river runs through and today I'll be just doing a couple of hours trotting, fishing for whatever I can catch on a floating maggot, that'd be dace, chub, roach, um, you know, some good roach in here. So yeah, I sort of scratch that fishing itch um, really enjoy it, something I've done my whole life. So yeah, I think a lot of carp anglers can probably relate. You know, we all started fishing at some point, not, not usually just for carp, you know, we, we used to catch other stuff and we forget it along the way. But I think there's still a lot to be said for getting out and going back to your roots. So yeah, today I'm on the park, I've met my friend James and we're gonna do a little bit of trotting. As far as my carp fishing this year, um, the wool pack was my main focus and I made a couple of films for the Nash TV channel on that and the second one will be out at the beginning of January, uh, New Year's Day I believe, so um, do check that one out if you want to find out what I got up to over there. But it's a fantastic venue, fantastic stock, had an amazing year on there. So that's a little bit of a brief catch up, um, let's get on with it, a bit of trotting, got about an hour of daylight left, time to get a few bites. Having the chub to about four pound out of this swim last year. Like they were all, it was, the water was a touch higher and they were all sat underneath them sticks on the far bank. It was um, good fun. I had one that I'd lost twice, didn't I? I had both my other hooks in it when I landed it the third time. Or I hit, hooked it the third time. Bye, 
Chuck now. Peas in a pod. Loads of fun, loads of bites, loads of chublet. Did see a couple of bigger ones, but sadly I was a bit too clumsy for them. Um, it's really clear and they're well aware they're being fished for here. But uh, yeah, it's a good way to spend a couple of hours on an afternoon.